Hello, everyone. Uh, I welcome you to the Battle of Programs for the Business School. My name is Marcelo Paulo de Naira, and today I'll be speaking for the International Management Program at Prague College. Uh, I'll let Pedro introduce uh, himself as well. Hey, yeah, Marcelo, thank you. Yeah, my name is Pedro. I'm a Brazilian uh, that lived in Prague and now live in Budapest doing the program of uh, the MSc Leadership and Strategic Management. Thank you. Uh, I'll probably start off right up uh, about the program that I'm studying. So as I mentioned before, I'm studying a master's uh, in international management. And today I'll be talking about three basic points what I think are the most beneficial parts of the programming studying at Prague College. Uh, among the first of them are interesting courses. Among it's really interesting when you think about like management uh, and what we're going to do in the future is one side of it is um, business, which means half math, theories, calculation, analysis, equations, and synthesis. And the other half is much messier, it's people. So one of the courses I really enjoyed was developing self and others because um, that course is dedicated to understanding ourselves and people as a whole. And uh, in the course, you're asked to understand your behaviors and understand your behaviors in work settings. So you have to actually analyze your own experience in uh, carrying out yourself in a workplace. And one of the things I really enjoyed about that class is the fact that it allowed me to analyze myself, my behavior, and to really see what am I doing in a workplace, what is productive and what isn't, and what could possibly be done in a better way. I think that's something that's really important for any person that wants to be successful or, at, or really like happy with themselves. Because this kind of behavior, analyzing yourself and creating a plan how to develop yourself is actually something that's vital for progression in life. And while I enjoy planning normally, this was uh, something that was really hard for me to do, is to create a plan for yourself, not day by day plan, but to write down your goals and to create a path towards the, those goals. So create a system of activities you need to carry out in order to create, to reach those goals. And often when we do these plans, uh, when we really do them well, it's a sobering look to see how much work needs to be done in order to get to where we want to be. So this was one of the courses I enjoyed really the most because understanding own personality and self helps you to understand other people. And when you can understand other people, you can cooperate with them and lead them. Uh, second course I would like to talk about is my favorite course, strategy. So strategic management in international con uh, context. Uh, one of the questions everyone asks me is, since I studied economics and business school, is what is the ideal solution? What is the best solution to a product, to a service or whatever? Uh, the thing I like about this question is that the answer is always, it depends. It depends on the core competencies of the company, on the organizational structure and the culture, the financial resources, capabilities and skills that are present in the company the macroeconomic trends, the industrial structure, the profit margins within that industry, the level of competition and the competing strategies the firms are using to compete for uh, clients and customers. It depends on markets, segments, and on customer satisfaction, price sensitivity, and customer base. All of these factors have to be included and it's always situational. So there's not one single correct answer because strategy, is so dynamic. You have to always take multiple and multiple sets of variables into account. What this course has taught me um, specifically is that you need to think. <laughs> you really need to think. It sounds stupid, but it's really hard to go through all of the factors, for example, I mentioned, and really find a competitive advantage for a company. It's really hard to think about all of these levels of analysis. But that's the thing I like about the course. It, I would say, provoked me to develop analytical, critical, but also lateral thinking 
while using world uh, real world examples and case studies. So that's something I value really much because um, I wasn't good at thinking became <laughs> before I came to Prague College. I thought I was good at it, but I wasn't. And to be able to think analytically and critically and be able to present an argument or something you want to say in an academic and professional settings, it's not as easy as it looks. It's not easy to give a competent presentation of a topic of your choice. So being able to prepare myself for that, being able to analyze all of these uh, variables that need to be analyzed is really helpful. And especially when we get to present our conclusions and someone questions our conclusions, that's the best part. The second thing, and I'll be sharing my screen for this. The second thing I wanted to show uh, to everyone here is the second reason why I like studying at Prague College and in the international management program. I'll quickly share my screen so you can see. This is the reason. So network, professional network. Uh, as you can see on the screen, this is a world map. And the red part are countries in which I have friends or acquaintances, which I can contact in case I should want to do business there or I need to find something. This is something really important and to think about in a business setting. You'll never be able to do everything yourself. You need other people and especially you need competent people who you know you can rely on. I have a friend like that in all of these countries. In all of these countries, I have someone who I can go to and say, hey, I would maybe like to expand into this country. Could you help me find some information or relevant sources? This is one of the crucial benefits I view as studying at, in a international management at Prague College is the network of people I met and made uh, become friends with or professionally worked with. It's it's a huge benefit to know that not only do I have access to information from these countries and people who are capable and know how to do business, not just there, in here in these countries, but when I expand this concept and when I say, okay, I have my professional network and my friends have professional network. Well, if I want to reach my friend's professional network and I have been a good friend or a good colleague, the network and the relationships are good which can result in something like this. Uh, this is not 100% correct, but this is a true estimation, the best I can give, of my network, network's network. These are all the countries I can go to and start a business if I want to, because I have friends, I have people who will allow me to in, uh, in that area, which is, I'll stop sharing the screen for a second which is something I really value. Uh, as an international student, knowing other people and getting to know other cultures really enriches you, not just from the cultural aspect perspective, but also intellectually. Uh, as I said before, I wasn't really good at thinking before, and I have made a lot of friends at Prague College, and they have shown me, like, uh, for example, a friend from Norway who showed me a completely different method or approach to thinking. And that's part of the, uh, of the network, is the people that you build. And I feel like and think Pro College is one of the greatest assets in that, is that providing that network of people who are competent and can help you in life. And for the last part, uh, I'll be talking about the worldwide projects we got to do and the interesting events I got to attend as a student here at Pro College. So one of the projects that I've been really thrilled about is a Phoenix project, an international business uh, challenge that I have created with my colleague, Nicoletta, who's also my classmate. And we've been working together with Teesside University and SRMI Institute in India to develop a business challenge. And not only is a business challenge for people with entrepreneurial skills, but a challenge that has a social application which is another aspect of doing business, at, uh, studying business at Prague College, is the ethical framework to business and social entrepreneurship that the school has taught me. So in the project, 
basically, there were students from Teesside University, from Britain, from Prague, and from SRMI Institute in India, who were asked the simple thing. Create a proof of concept of a project that has social and communal benefits to rural uh, in yeah, for rural communities in India. While we had to devise the whole framework, so the ethical framework, the rules, and everything for this project, we were thrilled about it because it meant we could do some actual good. Uh, so me and Nicola Town, a few other students from Tsai University, started doing that, and it turned out to be a great project. And I'm glad that it's getting more. Uh, it's becoming more of a permanent thing, and we're currently working on making that project a more permanent. Uh, yeah, more permanent project. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, one of the other reasons why I liked working on the Phoenix project is that I got to work with an even bigger range of international students. So not only from our school, but also from schools from India and the T side. And it was not easy cooperating and creating a framework for a competition with people in four different states in three different time zones and working completely online. But such experiences help you really get the experience under the belt. And that's something that's really crucial. And I'm really glad I got to participate in this project. Also, thanks to Prague College. The second uh, interesting event I would like to mention is I got to go to the British Embassy, thanks to Prague College, which is really nice. I've met a British ambassador. I've met a lot of C-suite people from art corporations, sponsors, and political representatives. And I've gotten this opportunity thanks to Prague College and the program. Uh, it was amazing, but also a little bit scary because seeing all the people and all the well, CEOs and COOs, uh, I was afraid a bit, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but then meeting those people and realizing, oh, they're just people like you, normal people. They just have more experience under their belt was humbling. And also getting in touch with them and getting in contact with them was a really great thing. And as a beautiful extension of my network. And this is it. I'll probably stop talking because I'm getting too, I'm rambling too much and I'll leave some space for Pedro. So Pedro. no rambling, no rambling at all. Thank now you, now you put me, not rambling at all. Now you put me on a tough point, you know, on a tough spot. Yeah, well, we for a battle of programs, exactly. For a battle of programs. And in, in, now you saw that C-suite is also people. Yeah, so you're here talking with a CTO and they also study. And here I am to talk about the MSc Leadership and Strategic Management. And, and specifically in, in, in this context of Prague College, what I'm doing it and living in, in Budapest is doing on a, on a blended learning format. And the blended learning is that uh, you, you have access to all the digital campus and the digital campus is, is something very interesting. We have the classes online and I, I, I didn't have the chance to go there in the campus physically, although it's part of the program to have it uh, twice per semester, if I'm not mistaken, a boot camp, like a full weekend uh, of, um, of classes, which is something very nice, although we did it online. Uh, so I, my, my colleagues that I met and it, compared to your network, I just did it fully online with the, the colleagues of the program. But you, you made very, very interesting points, Marcelo, with the specific with some of the, of the classes that you had. The first one that you mentioned about the, the, what was the name? I have it here. Develop yourself and others. And it compares with uh, uh, one that we have it here. We have three main classes this semester. It's the first semester that I'm doing it. And the classes are the work-based portfolio, something a, a little bit similar what you had with your, with your developer self and others. The challenges of globalization, something also similar with what you, you had experienced with your, with your global projects and global interactions. And the other one is the business research methods. And all those classes, they are unique. And what I could um, see it, experience, and have both from the lecturers and the colleagues that I'm working on. Um, from those, let me, let me give you the parallel. You mentioned your developer stuff and others, and we do have the work-based portfolio. So I'm, I'm not that young, I'm 37, I'm living in Budapest after living in Prague, 
I already mentioned this a couple of times. And I, I, I knew Prague College because of it. So I, I lived close by and I, I got to know the institution. And even more was that how, how I related to not only Prague and I could relate to Prague College as well, being the British University in Prague. And this specific course of the work-based portfolio is for the students that are already part of enterprises. And it connects with developers of and others with some theories. So it's very interesting how for me, some, some things that you saw a YouTube video, you saw a TED talk, you saw a TEDx, you um, saw a little quick information on Twitter about some management style theories that you never heard or better that you heard before, but you didn't know the scientific basis from it. And when you see the paper and when you go through this academic journey that was very interesting for me to go through and you're starting to read a scientific academic paper, and exploring this critical judgment sense and lateral thinking that you, you mentioned as well, was amazing to see it, how they derive from literally from scientific research. And it, it was enlightening, yeah? And in this work-based portfolio, we have five theories. I don't know if I'll be able to quote all of them, but first is leader member exchange theory, LMX. Very interesting how this dynamic works between uh, hierarchical organizations, how LMX happens horizontally, vertically, how they flip it from vertical to horizontal whenever you have in groups, out groups, very interesting path. Then you have emotional intelligence, extremely important for all of us to be resilient in these times and to be this rock solid point of beat for your team or as a partner and a peer for other colleagues in your organization. Another one that we're going through now is adaptive leadership. The leadership with the aim of um, managing and nurturing adaptation in people, in teams, in organizations. Very interesting, all of those. And when you go to the theory, to the scientific part, amazing. So, it, uh, and in the end, why I mentioned this and why it resembles with what you said of the developer yourself is that this work-based portfolio is about yourself. We, we go to in the classes with observational questions that we should observe on our environment, on our surroundings and reflect how did it make us feel? How did we react? How did you and ponder this to make an adaptation, a cold adaptation process to yourself to, be, to become your own, um, your own development uh, program that you, you created among this. Amazing, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thrilled by it. I don't know if I can ex express this even more. Connected to it, we have challenge of globalization. And this is, this is a, a topic very close to my heart. By being Brazilian, living in Europe, uh, and seeing other cultures with a, a very Latin lenses, it's something very um, refreshing because we can, get, we can get a view of understanding that you, you, the aspects of culture that we never thought of before and understanding the theory and the cultures, the spouse values, the models that we have, the anthropologists in business, in the end is also a business school and the anthropologists in business and how they saw this and how they were able to create theories that make so much sense for us to, to use them for the benefits of what you said, to answer in our professional context, the it depends, but it gives you the material, the, the critical sense of analyzing situations with the, with the, to support a counter argument after they depend. So you're not only saying it depends for the sake of depending, yeah. But you get back to it and say, yeah, it depends because if you're doing a, a, a part of specifically my company, it's a multinational in the life insurance services, and you're going for expanding, a merge and acquisition, expansion on the culture, on, on another country for different culture, you have to critically judge it. It depends because does it make sense for you to send your key people to go there? Are you tackling it with an ethno, eth, ethnocentric approach? Are you going to overcome the culture that you have it there? Are you taking into consideration the localization, geographic region, sub-ethnicities, all of those were um, of such widening view that were very interesting to, 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 to look at. And again, the theory behind, when you go to about something that you heard of, you talked about it and you didn't know, it, it, it gives you um, such a, it's, it's more than the know-how. It gives you the, the, the confidence of talking about the topic that you wouldn't before. You're talking about the really the, the scientific base of it. It's, uh, as you said, and, and 
going with this, I talk about both of them, and it, it, it's valid for the three classes that I'm having, is how caring the tutors were. And they are, yeah? I, I think that I, I didn't have any problem. It, my busy schedule, I'm, I'm usually doing things over the night because during the day I'm, I'm, I'm working. Is it on the weekend? And I send an email and suddenly, uh, minutes later I said, no, you're good to go. Your direction is clear or no. Take a look on this angle, look at a little bit different refactor here. And I always, they were always very open in both the weekend classes, the regular classes that we have. And my last one, my last one is the, it was the one that I went through the rabbit hole. Yeah, I, I followed the rabbit hole there. And it was the business research methods. This business research is helping you to prepare your thesis. So you're doing your proposal for your MSc and you're guided through with the tutor, guided through on how to structure your proposal. And to go there, it, it involves a lot of reading, involves a lot of planning. And it's part of our, our own um, cadence as a student to try to find your plan, find your rhythm find your pace and try to do this consistently as a habit. Yeah, find your triggering, anchoring habits that helps you to progress it uh, on, a, on a good step up. And this, uh, in, in the business research method, the rabbit hole were, um, and what I want to share the screen, was my process of, of understanding my relationship with academic research. I didn't have any, yeah, I, I came, my bread and butter is IT. I'm a chief technology officer in a life insurance company in a FinTech insure tech. Imagine when I got this in front of me. Excuse me for a second, I'll just share my screen very briefly. Yeah. I was faced with this and I said, what do I do now? Oh, no, it's not shared. Now it is, yeah. I was faced with this and I said, what do I do now? What do I type here? Um, so where do I start? And it, it was very interesting. My, 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 my topic itself is about strategy implementation and the effect of communication. So when I, I had here, you can see my last, uh, my last searches and I was discussing, I was trying to find for my literature review, quarter eight steps, the limitations. And I found some, some of the, of the, of the papers that we find, they are, um, under or they're after a paywall and a paywall because they are there are plenty of business journals big journals entities that are um releasing those research papers with peer review then they you have to get them through uh, something that they call it uh, a science direct or elsevier there are big names in it but the important part is that what Pratt college can can support us in doing it is this one is one of the biggest publications that they have it uh, Elsevier, if you go to pay it directly by yourself, it's uh, very, very expensive. But the, the opportunity that we have throughout, throughout uh, studying with Prague College is this, the oh, implementation. I want to show one very tricky part of what we have as a, this one. This is a paywall. Yeah, why do I, what I'm insisting on it is that this helped me a lot. After searching for something on Google Scholar, I was reverted to a place, to a, a website, to a, a business perp, a, a business institution, a, a research release institution that was, please tell your institution or pay for the article. And here, what we have it is the access through Teesside University for access for a myriad, an endless universe of knowledge and content, and that you have access to it to support you, to support your, your research, to report your paper, to support your, your growth as a student, as a professional, and as with uh, knowledge. Yeah, knowledge is power, and we all know this. I will just finalize the signing so you can see the, the end, uh, the part of the, of the access to the paper. And I'm waiting for the cache and just refresh it. No, something wrong. Yeah, it never works when we want it. Sorry for that. Anyway, I'll stop talking as well. You can find this. You can see that this side is one of the, of the partners. And I'm very grateful for Prague College for not only having this opportunity, but bringing here and sharing my, my experience. Yeah, appreciate it.
Thank you, Pedro. That's always Murphy's law. When something can go wrong, it will go wrong. It will. Yeah. Um, if I just can quickly address some of the things you've mentioned, uh, I probably forgot to mention it myself. Uh, the thing about the lectures, the availability and the help they provide you. Yeah, uh, I completely forgot about that. Uh, it's amazing, actually. Like, I've been studying because of the coronavirus. I've been studying in the digital campus. And so for the last uh, year, for the last year and a half, I was studying basically over the computer. And at the beginning, uh, you could see everyone adjusting to it. But I have a friends and I have friends at Czech universities who were basically doing similar classes to mine, but I noticed a huge difference. The difference was that in our classes, most of the people had web, uh, web cameras on. The discussion was plentiful. It was useful. It was a lot of different opinions and people actually sharing information, which for me personally, I don't go out that often. So for me, it, like this school and the work is one of the a few social interactions I have in a day. So it was amazing to see like we still carried on with this tradition and we as a students, but also with teachers and lecturers, they helped us into that digital environment and they helped to deliver the content of the lectures. And to be honest, like I'm mind blown. I had to speak for like a half an hour yesterday during the class. And it was so frightening. I was so nervous. I was so I really admired the lecturers for the adaptation they've done. So for me, we have a, like a specific for the for the context of this this um, MSc for the leadership and strategic management in the blended learning is a fast track. Um, are the classes? What is the cadence of the classes? We have classes every Monday. They go from five until um, officially until eight thirty nine. So it started at five two classes of two hours every week. And in the semester, as I mentioned, we have these two um, weekend classes. They, they run through Saturday uh, on a, from 10 until 12, and then after at one until three, 3.30 even. We did it last week with the work-based portfolio it was very nice. And as you said, uh, Marcelo, one, one of the, the adaptations of the tutors as well is the discussions that we have in class. Specifically for my, for our, uh, in this blended mode of the fast track where uh, the students are the ones already working and they have the, the, the work life already settled. It's how we have the chance to, to discuss the theory applied on what we perceive based on, the, on what we learn and what we saw the effects in the organization as well. So those are the ones that nurtured by the, by the, the tutors. It's, it's an amazing, it's, it's an invaluable experience, creating and expanding your network, learning from other people, learning from other, um, with very different backgrounds. So all the three of us, literally all the three of us, we're not, and we're not Czechs, and all of us are three different nationalities. Yes. Um, uh, the thing you mentioned was uh, interesting to me, the, the multicultural environment. That's something I wanted to touch on. Actually, I don't know if you know, Pedro, but I'm half Czech and I'm half Bolivian. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's the thing I wanted to highlight because it is important to me. As I mentioned before, I've met a lot of interesting people and colleagues in Prague College, people who I started working with or we keep in contact. And the important part about that is not only the contacts you develop like friends, but also the professional network and how they help you develop. I, I have one of my closest friends is a Norwegian, uh, Norwegian guy who helped me overcome so much in my personal development. And I only met him thanks to the Prague College. So not only that, but the network I've showed is, it's incredible. And especially like <laughs> the theory you talked about, uh, I had the same thing like, how did they discover this just by looking at the data? Like, really, how did you, like, Ricardo, how did you come up with this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's incredible. Like, for me personally, um, although digital campus is, uh, like, it's great, and the teachers have done extraordinarily well, I think for me personally, it will never replace the in-person value teaching because it has... It's just so much more um, 
exciting and I would say motivating. Like for me personally, I chose the international management as a program because I want to be a professional and an entrepreneur one day. But at the same time, I do feel like I want to go into academia. I want to be a researcher. And as you said before, to go into the real like science-based academia, that's, that's a lot of reading and that's a lot of studying. But that's something I really like about the program. I think you've also mentioned it. It's not, not only that I also work, but part-time. And it's, uh, it's the fact that we come into the classes and we, as students, we discuss our problems in, for example, in our work and we discuss our solutions or what we would suggest. And it's so helpful to get other people's perspective on issues and to discuss like these things in classroom because that's, that's what I feel like the, this is where the magic happens when we are just left alone and we get to talk and pursue our ideas. And to be able to do that in online setting, it was just incredible. So I'll just quickly uh, find one of the questions I like. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about the project that you have worked on and you have liked in particular? I would be probably, uh, sorry, I would be probably repeating myself but just quickly. So the project I really like, the International Business Challenge, what I really liked about it is the social aspect of it. And that's something I really want to pursue is the social benefit that can stem from entrepreneurship, like how businesses can benefit not only as a promotion, but how businesses can do actual good in this world by aligning their profit goals along with the interests and of societies and benefits of society. So what I really like about that project is the applicability. It's like basically what we did is take a bunch of students, about 20, 30, 30 students, and we force them to cooperate until they create something of a value, something that could really help people in those areas. And when you, it sounds bad, but we, we didn't force them. They, they <laughs> liked working. Uh, when we did this, there were so many teams and so many amazing ideas that came up out of that project. It was intriguing to me. Like one of the groups came up with a, a basically a silo, how to make a silo that will not be damaged by rodents and that could be economically sustainable. One of the projects came up with a solution on how to electrify India through renewable sources. And they are already in talks with uh, government officials to see if like something like that could be put in practice. So that's the part I like the most probably, the real, real projects that you get to participate in, that you get to do. Awesome. Very nice. I can only imagine the projects then because, uh, I would, well, with the, with the business context and, and, and being employed, I think it, it gets tricky for us to participate in it a little bit. Yeah. But anyhow, I and you pursuing academia, so good luck. Congratulations <laughs> for what you did so far. Good luck. Thank you. Not, not in a bad way, but in a very nice way because let me connect with one of the questions that we have it here. Um, how much time outside of class do you spend um, yeah. on it and how many hours per week? So I, one of the, when I arrived and you have the introductory the induction class, mm -hmm. yeah, the first class that you, you, you introduce yourself to, to, to the teachers, they are, they are introducing themselves. You, you know, who are your, your classmates? And I asked him, do you have any recommendation for us? Yeah, do you have any recommendation? And one of the tutors, the one for business research methods, uh, Dave said, Try to be consistent. Yeah, be consistent. Of course, there are, are weekends are weekends and you have time to do with things that you, you want, but allocate the time to dedicate, to give, your time, give yourself time for the, a lot of reading that you mentioned, Marcelo. And it, it was something that I started doing with pleasure. So the rabbit hole that I mentioned was because I started searching on those research papers and research papers that refer some, some other author that, that, that refers to another author. That refer, and you were mind blown by it mm -hmm. and you start doing it with pleasure you know you start reading literally fresh you say it, it, it's the base knowledge of, of something that was invented as, as word knowledge you know yeah. and wow so if it if i would translate it in hours at least my my, my recipe i try to read 
at least before at night, one, uh, I, not necessarily sometimes they're big, but one article or half of it. And I'll, I'll try to see if it's relevant for what I need to do, if it's relevant for me to take notes. Using, um, I use some, some support for having a, a tool that helps you to keep track of the paper that you, you, you read through. So those references that you need to keep. And in the end, I would say that apart from the class itself, I would take, um, give or take six to eight hours of, of dedication for a week. That's more or less what I, what I try to do. Yeah, I have the similar experience. I actually had Dave give me the same exact device when I was in uh, bachelor's. It was the best advice I've ever gotten from him, to be honest, uh, one of the best. He gave me many great advice. Uh, is to be consistent. And as you said, like, uh, I'll admit it, before coming to Prague College, I wasn't really a student type of a person. So I didn't really even know I would like to work in academia. And when I came here, I had to read. I had to read a lot of references and a lot of text. And as exactly as you said, like, it's a rabbit hole. You start with one paper and then you end up reading like a, a whole lot. And I wasn't doing so well at the beginning because exactly as you said, I didn't have consistency. I did everything at the last minute and it's a thing we young, young youngsters tend to do badly, but I learned from it. And so I said to myself, okay, so start by doing five minutes a day. You can do it for five minutes. And if you do each day, five minutes, at least it's something. Well, I started on five minutes and then I ended up doing it for like five, six hours. And I was like, oh, I have to go to work now. So yeah, I, I really like this. Oh, they, sorry. Um, no, excellent. It's what you said is that like the power of atomic habits. If you don't know what you do, do one of something. Yeah. Uh, it's a one word, one phrase, one paragraph. Yeah. And you, in your five minutes end up and summing up into a great amount of deal. Yeah. And you'll end up like reading the academic uh, papers for fun. I actually ended up like reading academic papers from different per, uh, disciplines for fun. So for example, for me personally, I really love finance, strategy, and organizational behavior. So partly psychology. And when I was getting bored with my economics and business papers, I just started reading psychology and organizational psychology and sociology. And I never knew it would end up that way, but because I started reading that, turns out I'm writing my thesis on similar subjects. So Pedro, I want to thank you very much for coming here. Uh, thank you for talking. I actually want to talk to you more now that I've learned something from you. So I hope I'll get to talk to you during our studies. And Perfect. I hope I'll meet you in a classroom, hopefully one day. And it'll I'll be a pleasure. Yeah, it'll be a pleasure to see everyone. I don't know if there are some participants or someone looking. If there are, uh, once everything comes down to normal or even on online, I'll be more than happy to talk to you. And as Pedro and the Procolic staff. If there are some things we haven't mentioned or failed to mention, uh, you can definitely contact Prague admissions team on their, uh, on their email. You can find it on the website. And I'll be disconnecting from my part. Thank you very much for all for attending, uh, for coming to see us today. And yeah, that's it for the battle of the programs. Strategy Thank wins. you, Marcella. Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye.